Hello, in this video, we are going to review the entire code and also we are going to talk about some details about the classes that we created in the earlier videos. Okay, let's start. First, we created this class here and also we use that uh, here in this function. And now we know the meaning of hidden dimension, layers, heads, and also here for the inputs upstream transformer class, we have hidden dimension, we have layers, we have heads, and uh, we have channels, which is the channels of the input to our network, which for us is a RGB image. So it's gonna be by default three. Number of classes, if you are using ImageNet, you can put 1000. And um, for this example, we just use three. And then head dimension, which is our embedding dimension, which is D and uh, that is 32. And window size seven, down scaling factors. We explained why we have four, two, two, two. And uh, also we talked about relative positional embedding, uh, which is true here. And then we said that we have four stages and let's look at these stages. For example, uh, in a stage one, the input channels uh, is gonna, channels three is gonna come as the input. For the stage two, uh, it's gonna be hidden dimension, which is a 96 as the input for the third one is a 2C or 96 multiplied by two. And then it's gonna be 4C for the last stage as the input. And then you have hidden dimension and hidden dimension. And if you remember from the uh, paper, the hidden dimension for the first stage, it was 96, then it was 2C, 192, 4C and 8C. So we can see that at the beginning, that is C, then it is 2C, then it is 4C, then it is 8C, okay? And then we have uh, layers, and for layers, uh, for the first layer, it is gonna come from here, 2, 2, it's from here, 2, 2, 6, 2. So it's gonna be 2 here, and then it's gonna be 2, it's gonna be 6, it's gonna be 2 again. And then we have this downscaling factor. Again, downscaling factor is gonna be four, two, two, two. And number of heads. So we know that number of heads is also three, six, 12, 24. And uh, head dimension, which is our embedding size is 32. It's always 32. And uh, window size is always seven. And relative position on embedding, we define that to be uh, true for all of the, the stages. Okay, now we have a better understanding of uh, these four stages. And also we said that we could have a MLP head when we want to do, for example, classification. And uh, you could uh, decide how many uh, neurons you want to have in your hidden dimensions. Maybe, for example, you want to have eight times of the hidden dimension as number of neurons here. And at the end, uh, you can use, for example, cross entropy, a loss function for your classification. And um, here in the forward, we said that we get the image as the input, we go to stages, and then we get the mean of that, and we put that in MLP. And the reason we get the mean, because uh, at output of the stage four is like this, is 768, seven by seven, and we want that to be in a format that we put that inside our uh, MLP. So what we are gonna do is to get the mean based on the dimensions two and three. So based on these two, so we get the mean. So, and then we put that in our MLP, okay. And uh, that is basically for this uh, class. And in this class, we use the stage modules. Let's look at the stage module that we created here. Again, for a stage module, um, we have input channels, we have hidden dimensions, layers, downscaling factor, number of heads, head dimension, window size, relative position embedding. We explained all of them in the previous class. And um, we said that the number of layers must be even because we need two blocks, uh, one block for a normal window MSA and the other one for shifted window MSA. And then we showed that we can have two different type of patch merging. One was the one that we used using conf2d and the other one was using an unfold and a linear layer. And then we showed how we put these swim blocks together. We said that the first block shifted is false. The second one shifted is true. And um, let's look at, for example, uh, here, 
uh, we have input to that uh, is going to be the hidden dimension as the input number of heads and head dimension also one other point about this swing block was that we said that the mlp dimension is going to be the hidden dimensions multiplied by four that is the number of neurons we use in mlp inside each swing transformer block and then within the forward we showed what is the input size and uh, what would happen after the input size we get we put that inside the patch merging and this is going to be uh, the input and output of each string transfer block for each stage and uh, then we have our regular block which is just window msa and then shifted window msa and at the end we just uh, permute the output to get to this order and uh, that is basically about uh, this class. And in this class, we use patch merging classes and also swing block. So let's look at the patch merging. Again, we just explained this patch merging and um, we show how we can just use this to create that hierarchic approach. Also for uh, conf uh, 2D patch merging, which is a simpler version of that, we can do the same thing. Uh, and I believe this conf 2D patch merging is also used in um, patch partitioning in VIT. And uh, for example, when you get an image, you want to just partition that to patches. You can just use a similar approach. And um, then we had this swing block, which was uh, one of the main blocks that we had. And if you remember, we tried to create all of the components. We created the residual, pre-norm fit forward and window attention and uh, let's look at them very quickly for residual we show that we can use this function uh, for pre norm uh, we can use this one we also showed that we could have post norm which is used in version 2 and also we had this fit forward uh, which is our mlp inside the swing block and for our fit forward we have a two layer neural network and the first layer we saw the activation function and also uh, we saw the uh, how many number of neurons we should put inside that which is this one then we came to create this window attention and for window attention uh, we uh, try to create some uh, functions to be used inside that uh, the first thing we created uh, was this uh, cycle shift that helped us using the torch roll to do the shifting all of the windows at the same times down and right and also we showed that when we do the shifting we need a specific type of masking for the last row and last column so we use this function to handle that part and also for our relative positional embedding we created one function here and um, yeah we have all of the components for the window attention now and uh, inside initialization, we said that if it is a uh, first version, uh, this is our scale. If it is a second version, this is going to be our tau for cosine similarity. Uh, the rest of the things, uh, we know uh, dimension, we know heads, a number of heads, uh, head dimension or our embedding size is 32. We have shifted, it could be true or false, window size and relative positional embedding. And um, here we showed if it is shifted, we need to use a cycle shift uh, and we called one function cycle shift. And at the end, we need to shift it back at the end of the uh, shifted block. And because we want to use that in a regular block for the next step. And also we showed here how to use uh, those masks. For example, we emphasize here those masks are not learnable. So we put the requires grad as false. Also, we needed this linear function for creating query keys and values. And uh, here we initialized our relative positional embedding. And at the end, we needed one linear layer for output. So inside our forward, uh, if it is shifted, we use cyclic shift. And then we showed that how to uh, change the shape of the uh, tensors. So here we saw the uh, shape and then we showed how to use that to QKV function and create QKV by rearranging. And then we showed here dot product similarity implementation and also cosine similarity implementation here. And then we said if it is relative positional embedding, we use uh, this section. And if it is just absolute positional embedding, we use this one. 
also for shifted we implemented the masks and after placing the positional embedding and mask on that so it is ready to be put inside the softmax function and then we get our attention and then we multiply that to the values here and at the end we rearrange it again and then put in our linear function for getting the output and if it is shifted we make sure that our output is corrected for the next step using the cyclic backshift okay let's run the code one more time Okay, now we are able to run the code and uh, we saw that for uh, this uh, example, if I have, for example, uh, this tensor as input, I should be able to get this one as the output and uh, pretty much this is all we have for the code. So the code is uh, running.